many people use use this? I've used this. We have the uh, uh, vulnerability management platform too. And, uh, yeah, I think that's something you can pay for, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then also they have a website like web application testing. Okay. It's it definitely run your site through this. Uh, if the free, it, yeah. I mean, you can pay for the extended stuff, and that's great. But at the bare minimum, use this free service that they offer to test your uh, thing. I know it says 361 seconds to go. They don't mean it. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like installing software on Windows. It drops very quickly and then rises again. How many people have Direct TV? Anybody? You ever reboot the damn thing? It goes through this counter forever. It stops about 87% for about three minutes and then and then it finishes. So it's still going. Simulating handshakes and all kinds of stuff. Zero seconds. Yeah, it's going to be done. It's, 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 it's like Windows. Yeah. Okay, so what we really want is a score of, a, of an A, right? We didn't get an A primarily because of trust issues. Uh, Qualsys's site doesn't know anything about Mug CA. Right? But they do say if trust issues are ignored, we get a C. UN Cypress, you should too. I'm sorry? UN Cypress, you should too, because it's vulnerable to Google. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's the default okay. uh, Apache config. Right? It's kind of telling us what's wrong. The, the certificate is not trusted. We understand that. Right? It's vulnerable to the Poodle attack. Right? So it's going to cap our grade to a C. Uh, it tells us disable SSL3 to fix that. Uh, it accepts the RC4 cipher, it'll cap it at a B, so even if we fix that, we're got, not going to do any better than a B. Uh, it does not support forward secrecy, and uh, the chain is incomplete. Okay. Uh, then if you, if you just scroll down, it tells you all kinds of stuff. We're still supporting SSL3, that's a big no-no now. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff, cipher suites uh, that are insecure that we're supporting. So it's great to go there and yeah. check your check your site, right? That's a great job. All right. So, how do you fix these things? That's the other site. Mozilla, they have a fantastic site. Mm -hmm. They're generating uh, this is the configuration generator, the SSL configuration generator. Okay. Um, uh, you tell it what you have for a server. Uh, we have Apache. Supports uh, uh, Nginx and Lady, uh, uh, Light TBD Ooh. and HA Proxy, like I did. IIS is in there. Uh, I'm sorry? IIS is in there. Um, I mean, you probably pay someone else Microsoft. to configure it for you. Yeah, yeah it's not there. Yeah. Uh, okay, and you can choose uh, intermediate or modern. And if I uh, uh, basically, whatever I choose there, this is the config that they suggest. You got to watch out for this line because it wraps. It's, it's out to about here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. But if I cut and paste that thing, it'll get it all. Right? Uh, it asks for what version of Apache you're using, and I think we're using uh, 2.4.7. Right. Uh, we are using uh, yeah, 2.4.7. Okay. So we'll plug that in. And uh, what version of OpenSSL? Uh, we are using 1.0.1 F. I do know that. I checked earlier. Okay. Uh, the official version is up to 1.0.2 E. Uh, this is a version of Ubuntu that's uh, a year and a half old. Anyway, when I leave that field, it, it, you didn't see it, but it regenerated that stuff. Okay? If I take this stuff, and, and I ask for intermediate, Intermediate means the oldest compatible clients will be Firefox 1, Chrome 1, IE 7, Opera 5, Safari 1, Windows, IE 8, and Android 2.3, Java 7. Okay. If I go modern, it'll generate a different thing. Oh, and it's much newer clients, right? <coughs> Firefox 27, Chrome 22, IE 11. That means no IE 10 or right. before. Opera 14, <coughs> Safari 7. Uh, I think Safari's up to 8 now, so it's not very old. Safari, Android 4.4. What's Android at these days? Anybody know? Six. 
six. Wow. So they go back to four four in Java eight. <coughs> it's a it's a different config, mm -hmm. believe me. So this uh, all all this configuration supports those browsers. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, this configuration supports only those browsers. If I take this configuration and I plug it into my Apache config, those browsers will connect up securely. Oh, okay. okay. And then older less. browsers, older browsers may not even connect at all. Right. Or they won't sure do SSL with it, at least. Yeah, at least not with SSL. Okay, so, uh, I don't want to take the time to do the cut and pasting, but I do have those things already in my uh, config file. Which one, modern or intermediate? I got them both. <coughs> okay. okay. Uh, uh, default. Um, this is one one of the lines that it wants, this HSTS thing. And down here, Down here, that's the modern config right there. Right. That's the intermediate config. Um, I was going to show you both, but let's just go all the way to the modern. Right. So there, I uncommented that. Uh, if I set wrap, you can see this long wow. line. And, uh, I'm, I'm kind of colorblind, so I can't see that red at all. I, I know that there's some red there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you guys can. Read it better than I can. Anyway, it's got any place where it's got an exclamation that means turn that off. So it's like turn off DES, turn off RC4, turn off 3DES, turn off MD5, uh, turn off uh, a whole bunch of these things. But anyway, th this is the ciphers that that browser that that server will support. Turns off uh, SSL compression, honor cipher order. That means uh, there's a colon every so often here. That means first try this cipher, and if that one, if the browser, it, the browser and the server negotiate mm -hmm. with each other how they're going to communicate. And it starts, uh, that negotiation is driven by this cipher suite command line. Okay, so yeah. that's, uh, basically it's trying all the best ones first, and then it keeps falling back, falling back, until eventually they'll agree on something. All right? Hopefully. Uh, and then there's some lines down here, too. That are also part of it, uh, but they didn't change in between intermediate and modern. Okay, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to check. Uh, before I restart the browser, I like to do a uh, Apache CT two CTL check test config test. <coughs> it's happy, so let's restart. Is it? Yeah, it doesn't actually stop, disconnect the uh, running uh, connections. <laughs> Interesting to bring that up. <clears throat> I'm running this thing on, uh, on an Amazon server, right? Mm -hmm. Look at all the people connected up to my web browser. My web ah. Server. Ah. <laughs> Within three minutes of that machine being up. Huh. Wow. Well, actually, you just killed all the connections by doing. So now they're all in the time. They're all in the time. Wait, right? right? They will come back. They will actually be hitting my server. Right. <coughs> nice. Not going to get it, much. <laughs> whereas you, if you do a reload, it reloads the configuration, but, but leaves the existing connections That's going. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, let's go back to the server test, and let's run it again. Let's clear the cache. Start running again, and it's going to take two or three minutes. So while that's running, questions? I just wanted to, uh, there's, if anybody runs IIS, yeah. there's actually a tool out there called IIS Crypto. I don't know if you hear it, but basically it gives you little check boxes. It lets you enable. Like that's a tool on the IIS machine? Yeah, you just install it, and then you can just check which ones you want. So you can okay. enable and disable uh, different uh, algorithms. More questions? Good. Okay. Good. So how would you provide like a corporate uh, SSL certificate process? I mean, is that something that uh, you know, you'd have like people just sitting there all day long typing stuff in to provide to you? Or would you have like a website that you enter in some information? Well, and there, are, there, are, there are packages you can buy that will kind of automate that whole thing for you if you wanted to. You can certainly write your own that's just a wrapper around OpenSSL. 
how often would you be doing it? I, I could imagine a company like Ford could be doing it a lot. So you might want to automate some of these processes? Well, I'm thinking about automating it to the point. Well, I have, I have a VMware environment, right? So someone clicks on a button and they get an automatic created VM. Yeah. So how do you create virtual machine, you know? You'd have to script SSL. it and, you know, just script the open SSL. <coughs> and the process of creating that VM, you probably had to give it a name or a tag or something. So, you know, set up a tag. I don't have a lot of experience with AWS, but you can you can create these tag things and you can make one of the tags the server name and then you can fetch that from Amazon and generate your, uh, your certificate with that name. And you can really automate the whole thing. Right? Okay, so we got a little bit better. We, we went from a, a C to a B. It's still got a problem with our, obviously, with our, uh, it's not going to sure. trust our certificate, sure. but the chain is incomplete. Okay? There's one more thing we can change. We'll actually get that thing up to an A. One more thing we can change, and that's this. Remember I copied that mug CA cert file over to the SSL cert The time server. is now 8.30 and the library will be closing in 30 minutes at 9 p.m. Please be advised that the internet will shut down 10 minutes before. Oh, okay. Thank you. Poor internet. <laughs> now it knows. Yes, yeah, so now if I, uh, would you say reload? Yes. Okay, reload, it's much faster. Doesn't have to wait for those connections to shut down. Okay, so now we'll do it one more time. Uh, could you summarize again what you just changed? I didn't quite catch that. I put the Mug CA certificate. Uh, I, I basically made uh, our server serve up the Mug CA certificate as part of the certificate chain. Remember, remember this example of these, uh, these certificates, that each one signed by a separate one. If you do that, if you have a certificate on your web server that's signed by like a chain that's three or four long, you have to provide all these intermediate keys. Like hopefully your browser already knows about the, knows about the root certificate. But you have to provide these at the server uh, so that uh, it can fetch the whole chain of certificates verify each one until it gets to this. I just basically made Mug CA available on the web server uh, at the SSL level, not at the file downloadable level. Uh, I, configured S I configured Apache to serve up that file <coughs> along with my certificate. By doing that, you can see our it's, it finished. You see what our score did? Our score jumped up to an A. Right? Forget the T. Because we know that they're not going to trust Mug CA. But if, if it weren't for that trust issue, that big honk and trust issue, uh, our server is configured with an A level of security. It's pretty nice. Okay. So the only problem it's got is our certificate is not trusted. It likes all the configuration we have. Okay. Uh, it's got the two certificates. And everything else. So. Going to set up your server. You're going to put an SSL certificate on it. You really want to try this Qualsys SSL Labs thing, and you want to use that Mozilla site to get your configuration. Because it, believe me, I spent a lot of time before I stumbled onto that Mozilla site trying to get my score to come up on my on my servers for my public facing. Systems. Will those links be somewhere that we can get at? Um, well, they're on my slides. I should make my slides available. So the slides will be available on the site? They, they'll probably be on the mug site, or, and at the very least, we'll have them on the, uh, the discuss list, uh, which if you go to mug.org and you go to about us, you'll find all sorts of places to find mug. Uh, we have an announce list. We have a discuss list. Announce is for meeting announcements. Discuss is for uh, general discussion and other tomfoolery and whatnot. Um, and we also have an IRC channel in Freenode. Uh, it's mug.org, all one word. And we also have a Google Plus community. Uh, so if you head over to plus.google.com 
I think if you search for mug.org, you'll find us, or at least go over to mug.org slash about us, I think it is, or slash about. It's on the top bar, it'll say about, and that'll show you where to find all of our stuff. I just, uh, I just saved the slideshow as a PDF. Now I'm going to post it to the, uh, uh, what's the, discuss at mug.org? So all you guys that are on the mailing list will get it. And it'll show up in the archives as well. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I have a slide. Do you want it? Okay, just one second. Sorry, Craig, it's taking so long. Yeah, there it is in the mutual. dot, 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 PDF. Yeah. Okay, sent. So there you go. So if you're not on the mailing list, get on the mailing list. Uh, when you do, it'll be there. Go to the archives if you can't find it. Hopefully we don't start all this right. And that's it. Okay? Thank so, you, Jim. Great job. Search on that. Okay. <coughs> oh, yeah, I want to. I, want to, I can go get another one. I keep that. You got it? I'm, I'm just going to take the pictures of it. So, before everyone wanders away, I'd like to tell you about all the places you know will go. In the grand tradition of Dr. Seuss and his book, Oh, the Places Will Go. Uh, this is a read-along. Uh, I'm going to read the text of the slides. I know that, that annoys some people. Get over it. <laughs> well, the places Unix will go will start from its birth, a replacement for Multix, a system of great girth. The Uniplex Information and Computing Service, Unix for short, a programmer's workbench, not much of import. It started off life on the PDP-7, unnamed until it reached the PDP-11. With 16-bit mostly orthogonal instruction set, this little-used machine did Unix beget. The system grew to fit several needs, research, word processing, and space travel deeds. The system took form on the PDP-11, the oldest machine to run Unix v7. <laughs> but assembly code is hard to maintain, and with Unix came something to ease the pain. Complex systems must use assembly for everything, they cried, but the C programming language cast that claim aside. Unix was written in C by V8, and with it, the chance for Unix to migrate. Ritchie and Thompson pre presented Unix to all in 1973, but Bell couldn't monetize it because of a 1956 consent decree. So Unix was shipped on magnetic tapes and all sorts of media and all sorts of shapes. The source was available on an as-is basis. Find a copy of Lions, and we're off to the races. Unix for teaching and educational use, version 6, sent set Unix's commercial side loose. Development was quick and the patches released, sometimes without letting the attorneys say their piece. <laughs> Unix was on a deck, but Bell Labs felt restricted. Bell bought an inner data 832 to see deck evicted. And then Unix ran on a VM370 guest, Univac wow. 1100, and Intel 8086 with a custom MNU blessed. Near the end of the 70s, Unix showed up in places it even brought smiles to ARPA's faces. But the 1980s would start Unix's spiral, for that is when plucky Unix went viral. Oh, the places Unix will go to thousands of sites, they even noticed that they were even noticed by the magazine Byte. Companies may support other operating systems, it's true, but a Unix implementation always happens to be able, probably two. 16 architectures and 60 different vendors, each of them hoping to be a contender. Onyx released Unix for the Zilog C8002, and Microsoft Xenix and SCO came into view. Bill Joy co-found Sun in 82, before and after many long years of BSD foo, which leads me to name the first Unix schism, Unix System 5, or BSDisms. <laughs> Other products Unix will start, though not by intent. Some regarded proprietary Unix with discontent. 
So we write it they did and did not retreat until the GNU versions were feature complete. The GNU project even surpassed their faults with better handling and correcting the faults, better performance and features in so many cases, and better portability to hundreds of places. Now for a brief pause for a blessing from St. Ignatius. <laughs> well, the places you have to go in the decade of flannel, workstations galore, and raised floor panels. Just about everyone made a Unix back then. Hell, BSD probably accounted for 10. HP UX, AIX, Ultrix, Erix, Next Step, Sun OS, OSF1, Unixware, BSD, Phoenix, Xenix, Minix, just try to rhyme any of those. <laughs> Unix blossomed and Unix bloomed. Unix became part of every server room, but Unix still cost a few pretty <coughs> pennies, and one proprietary license is one license too many. Oh, the PlaySix Unix will go. At least its philosophy, using small bits of code linked via piped methodology. Computers without a capable MMU were still able to run with some, some tools from GNU. Mint is not tossed and built in Atari STs. Amiga 3000 UX ran Emix with ease. <coughs> Posix brought Unix-like stuff to Windows Brethren. Whatever the hell were they thinking back then? Oh, the places Unix will go and lead on eternal, especially with some variant of the Linux kernel. For, for what we call Unix is lately Unix inside, something I'm sure BSD folks will deride. For back in the 90s, there was such frustration. Unix's license was commercial and education. So Linus wrote out his kernel with a peak of peak and released it to as Linux. Yes, GNU Linux, please do not freak. His kernel went through Usenet, and so it appears we learned, we all learned that Libre is not free as in beers. It spread through the world like a field of poppies and caused some of us to use all the floppies. Thank God for those guys in those days. Oh, the places Unix will go leading to Y2K, Google, Yahoo, and even eBay. The last thing a struggling.com would need is software vendor's mouth to feed. Apple flirted with Unix in several iterations, but it struck a deal to bring jobs innovations. Apple bought Next Step and began the conversion from Mac OS system to a Darwin-based version. Mac OS 10, that's 10 as I've been told, brought the Mac to the Unix-based fold, and with it a standard that hit all desktops, which turned their gray buttons into lickable gumdrops. <laughs> well, the places Unix will go with Linux proliferation. Most embedded systems have a Unix relation. Android and iOS have, Uni have Unix-based cores, and most consumer-grade routers sold in the stores. TiVo and some Linux TVs are Linux-based. Plain entertainment systems use its interface. Raspberry Pi, the chip, and Beagle Bone boards. SBCs, mini PCs, and even chess boards. Although if you find one of those, let me know, because I couldn't find one online. Oh well. <laughs> <clears throat> Unix is used on devices in space, and right here displaying this natty watch face. <laughs> Linux powers my sound system at home and probably runs on my office phone. Oh, the places Unix will go, and would, we would be remiss if we didn't mention those who took the piss. <laughs> Unix has its detractors and claims Unix stunted operating systems perfection affronted, to which I say bullshit mm -hmm. point to the facts. You can re run VMS or Unix on a VAX. Folks had the option to run whatever they pleased, and Unix would have died if it were diseased. Mm -hmm. Sure, Unix isn't perfect, that much is clear, but please pull your head from your rear. Unix's <laughs> portability made an attractive choice, and easy script scripting made systems ugh, made sysadmins rejoice. I said that fast five times. Well, the places you don't go, Unix will go, there's no end in sight. There's new things with Unix released tonight. I'm confident that the distinction with how Unix goes is whether it runs Unix or is stocked with Windows. <laughs> so whether it's Linux, Macintosh, Solaris, or new, Darwin, Android, or iOS, two BSD variants of all different stripes, HPUX, or even Siglin <coughs> types, <clears throat> I want to invite you all to bring Unix along and make whatever you brought, whatever you make more awesome and strong. Unix came a long way and has further to go, so turn up the lights and on with the show. Thank you. Very good. Don't too much time on it, Dan. Oh, wow. <laughs> there was more pages than that than there were slides in my understanding. <laughs>